Thank you for joining us today on The Cross TV. Today we are very pleased and honored to have Pastor Frank back in our Cross TV studio today. So Pastor Frank, God bless you and the floor is yours. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. We want to thank God once again for today um, and for privileges given us to be here at the Cross TV once again to bring to you the word of God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Tracy, for, I mean, um, being so grateful and uh, being graceful to be a blessing to bring me here today. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for the Cross TV Thank God for the founder of the Cross TV. And um, I thank God for my lovely viewers for um, connecting with us today. Hallelujah. I want you to connect your heart, your spirit, and your mind because God has something for you today. Hallelujah. Let's pray so we can go straight into the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I give you praise for such a time like this as you have opportuned me to bring your word to your people and all over the world. I pray that as your word is coming, bless your word and cause your word to bless your people. Let lives be touched, let lives be changed, let lives be transformed by your word. I pray for the one that is sick, that need healing, that by your word, let them be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that you anoint me and my clay lips with fresh oil and fresh power and fresh anointing to minister, to deliver your word to your people. I thank you, Holy Ghost, for taking over today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, once again, I want to thank God for the opportunity. I want to share with you very briefly and yet powerfully, and um, I want you to call your families, your loved ones, to get glued to the TV station because God has something for you today and for sure have an expectation because expectation is the manner of manifestation. Hallelujah. I want to share with you um, briefly the mystery of grace, the mystery of grace. And I want to read for you from the book of Luke chapter 20 verse 40, the book of Luke chapter 20 verse 40 and don't forget i'm talking about the mystery of grace hallelujah luke chapter um two i beg your pardon verse 40 luke chapter 2 verse 40 the bible says something it said over here it said and the child grew and became strong in spirit filled with wisdom and the grace favor and spiritual blessing of god was upon him and the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace, favor, and spiritual blessings of God was upon him. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you the mystery of grace. I want to submit to you um, grace. When we talk about grace, what is grace? Grace is the spontaneous gift from God to his people. The generous, free, and total, unexpected, and undeserved that takes the form of divine favor, love, clemency, and a share in the divine life of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something that the grace of God is able to lift one from the backside of life to the front part of life. Which is to say that it doesn't matter where you might be right now. It doesn't matter what you might be going through right now. It doesn't matter what people might be saying about you right now. It doesn't matter the rejections, the dejections that you might be going through. All you need is to be kept connected to the grace of God. When the grace of God comes upon your life, one of the things the grace of God will do in your life and for your life is that it gives you the grace for you to have it easy in life. Life. When we talk about a grace, it means that God gives you a certain anointing through his grace that makes life easy for you. So I want to talk to somebody out there who feel like giving up today due to the circumstances and the situation you might happen to find yourself in. I want you to know that grace has been made available for you. Hallelujah. You cannot throw in the towel. You can't give up and you 
cannot turn your back on God, on yourself, and on your generation. You can't give up right now because the grace of God has been made available for you. You can only understand the grace of God by revelation through the Holy Spirit and by the word of God. Hallelujah. When we talk about the grace of God, the grace of God is something that when it comes on you, you cannot explain how you got there, but you get there all right. Hallelujah. I want to pray for somebody watching me right now. You might feel like you are down today. You might be watching me from the hospital bedroom on the bed. You might be watching me from somewhere that the situation looks bad. In the name of Jesus, I release the grace of God to locate you right now. In the name of Jesus, I activate the grace of God to manifest itself in your situation. I speak to that situation. I speak to that issue in your life. Let the grace of God manifest and let the grace of God bring you out of that unpleasant situation. If you believe, give God a big amen. Hallelujah. There is somebody watching me. You have a ministry and it looks as if your ministry is not functioning as it's supposed to function. The Lord said, I should tell you there is grace coming on you and from today onwards your ministry is about to function than ever before in the name of jesus ladies and gentlemen the grace of god has the ability to qualify you even when men says you don't qualify there are a lot of people that are out of job today there are a lot of people that are not being accepted today at a certain place or certain places. There are a lot of people even to talk about the family. They look down upon you and they're like, you cannot marry our daughter. Our son cannot marry you. Ladies and gentlemen, when the grace of God comes upon you, it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter whatever thing they are saying. It doesn't matter whatever thing they have said. It doesn't matter whatever thing they might be thinking about you. When grace comes upon you, even though who hated you before they will turn back and look at you and they will say we are sorry we need you we want you and you are the one i don't know what you might be going through right now once again you might be going through rejection and dejection you might be going through a certain kind of sorrow you might be going through a certain kind of situation in the name of jesus i speak to your life let there be an open heavens let the grace of god be released and be manifested in your life and I speak in the name of Jesus that by the grace of God let there be divine acceptance coming to you once again let there be divine establishments coming to you once again I release the grace of God into your life hallelujah amen glory to Jesus now the grace of God or his grace connects us to the exact strength of God. The grace of God connects us to the exact strength of God. What do I mean by that? People of God, when the grace of God comes upon your life, it doesn't matter how little that thing in your hand is. The grace of God comes into your life and it multiplies whatever you have in your hands that might look as if it is little or it is nothing. It is the grace of God that comes upon nothing and makes it something. It is the grace of God. When the grace of God is at work in your life, the mystery about the whole thing is that you become a mystery that your enemies cannot fathom and they can't find a standing point or an entry point into your life to stand on to keep on to accuse you or to fight you because grace comes into your life and instead of you to be punished, grace says no, you can be punished because you have been justified, you have been qualified to manage that which God has put in your life. When grace connects you to the exact strength of God, it causes you to achieve much 
with the little. When the grace of God comes upon your life, it causes you to cover the longest distance within the shortest possible time. And that is how you look at yourself and you'll be wondering, how did that get here? Then you realize that it has been the grace of God. That is how somebody will look at a life and will remember when he or she thought it is over, but you realize that all this while you thought it is over, you are still achieving something and you are still progressing in life. It is not anything done, the grace of God. The mystery of the grace of God. The mystery of grace. Hallelujah. His grace connect us to the exact strength of God. The mystery of grace. You just can't really explain all about grace. Because when grace is, is at work, it breaks protocol. When grace is at work, even if your enemies speak evil into the ears of your helpers, grace differentiates you and grace speaks for you. And grace makes sure that whatever God has for you through your helpers get into your life. I don't know the kind of help you need, but in the name of Jesus, let the grace of God manifest that help in your life. Let the grace of God bring you those helpers. Let the grace of God bring you that thing that your heart have desired for and you have prayed for and it looks as if it is not coming. Let the grace of God manifest it to you and for you right now in the name of Jesus. The mystery of grace. The mystery of grace. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you five purpose of God's grace. Five purpose of God's grace. But before I give you, I want to read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And I read, hallelujah. Now, it says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ... The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. People of God, the grace of God comes to you because the love of God has already been released into your life. That is why don't look down upon yourself. That is why don't allow anybody to look down upon you. I want to say something. The fact that you were born naked does not mean that you were created empty. You came out of your mother's womb naked, but you came loaded with something because of the love of God and by the grace of God. So you can't look at yourself and say, well, my friends said this about me at school, at the workplace, in a family. My mother, my father said this about me. My siblings said this about me. And um, even my, my boss at the workplace said this about me. Or even your pastor said this about me. No, there is something in you that was deposited in you without your permission, all by the grace of God, for you to manifest something precious that money cannot buy. Grace. All is because of the workings of grace. Hallelujah. So he said, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The grace of God is what helps you to get established in a place where the Holy Spirit begins to work on you. You don't qualify, I don't qualify. But when the grace of God comes upon you and I, it positions you and I for the spirit of God to work on our imperfections. The grace of God. The grace of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. Without the grace of God, the Holy Spirit cannot work on us. And the Holy Spirit cannot be in us to work on us or in us. Because his name is Holy Spirit. And the Bible said that there is none under the sun that is righteous. In the book of Psalms, he said, no, not even one. And so, by the grace of God, the grace has given us an extension help being connected to the righteousness of Jesus. 
So whatever thing we do, it is not because we qualify, it is because grace qualified us to function in the righteousness of Christ in order to access the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit for a manifestation. Hallelujah. Now, the purpose of grace. Number one, the purpose of grace is to elect the sinner from death to life is to elect the sinner from death to life. Number two, is to justify us. The grace of God comes to us or came to us by the death and the resurrection of Jesus after his blood was shed for us and the covenant was established and sealed by his blood. So the grace of God, after all these things, the grace of God came to justify us. Hallelujah. Number three purpose of, of God's grace, it, the grace of God came to sanctify us. The grace of God came to sanctify us. Number four, the grace of God came to, to glorify us. It came to glorify you. It came to glorify the power of God, the, 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 um, 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 the beauty of God in your marriage. In your home, in your business, in your ministry, in your body, in the area of your health. There is somebody watching me. You, you might be sick right now. I want you to stretch your hand towards the screen because God is touching you and healing people right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak to you watching me all over the world. Any form of infirmities in your body, any form of sickness in your body, might be coronavirus, might be cancer, arthritis, rheumatism. It might be any growth in any part of your body or any kind of sickness. In the name of Jesus, I release the grace of God to touch you right now. And I speak to your body in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now. I release the, the flow of the power of healing by the grace of God into your body. Be healed and be touched right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. There is somebody watching me. The Lord is ministering to me that you have been struggling with asthma for a long time. Asthma. Right now as I'm talking to you, the Lord said, touch your, your chest. Touch it right now because he's healing you from that asthma. In the name of Jesus, I curse that infirmity out of you right now. Out of you right now in the name of Jesus. There is somebody, I hear a name in my right ears like Ishmael. Ishmael. And the Lord is ministering to me to tell Ishmael that his grace and his covenant is with you. Because that which he has called you to do, it shall come to pass. I'm seeing in a spiritual realm like you are holding something like a sword and a horn with oil. And I see a flaming kind of fire on your head. And the Lord said, I should tell you, he has called you into the ministry as an apostle of God. And he's going to use you all over the world. There is somebody you are watching me. And I see you watch me from the Asian lands, from Asia, somewhere Asia. The Lord said, I should tell you, there is revival coming to your ministry. There is revival coming to your ministry. There is somebody watching me, I can see something like a divorce issue, like a divorce, something that is at a court right now. The Lord said, pray for your home and pray for your husband because revival is coming and that which the enemy did against your home is being broken right now in the name of Jesus. There is somebody you are watching me. I see like your brother is in jail and you have been praying for God to intercede, intervene for your brother for some time now. The Lord said I should tell you there is favor and grace working something out for you right now. I see this lady, you are praying for your brother. The Lord said your brother is going to have favor because his grace is going to reach to him and there is going to be a good news coming to your family right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, the last thing about the um, purpose of grace is that the grace of God causes us to be conformed to the will and nature of God once again. So, I want to say something very quickly, then we move on. Our election by God's grace is our exoneration and acceleration into a better life. 
Our election by God's grace is our exoneration and acceleration into a better life. Another thing is that our justification in Christ by his grace is a fortification that gave us the power to overcome the enemy. The grace of God came to fortify you against the workings of the enemy, against the operations of the enemy, against the spiritual attacks of the enemy. Bible says we wrestle not against by flesh, we, 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 we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces against spiritual, I mean, operations of the enemy. So when the grace of God comes on you, it fortifies you. It gives you the right standing. It gives you the right positioning in order to counter-attack the works of the enemy. I pray for supernatural strength. I pray for supernatural fortification to come to you right now against the workings of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so our sanctification in Christ by his grace gives us the qualification to achieve our dreams and visions in life. And the other last but one says that Christ's glory is what changes or what changed our ugly nature to the beauty of himself. Christ's glory is what changed our ugly nature to the beauty of himself. When I talk about our ugly nature, some, some of us or some of you might be struggling with the issue of anger, temperamental issues. That is ugly. Some of you might be struggling with lying. Some of you might be struggling with, with slander. You, you slander somebody. Some of you might be struggling with, with, with all sorts of issues. Of course, nobody's perfect. That's why the grace of God was made available for you and I. And it's still available for you and I. The grace of God. The grace of God. So, it's glory or Christ's glory is what changed our ugly nature to the beauty of himself. Hallelujah. The last one is grace made us to become one with him again. So his grace gave us divine reconciliation between man and God. That is the grace of God. Now, I want to go through very quickly within the next five minutes and I'm done. Um, the five types of grace or, or the five types of God's grace. The five types of God's grace. Number one is sanctifying grace. Number two is actual grace. Number three is grace of the Holy Spirit. Number four is charisms. Number five is grace of state. And I want to explain to you very quickly. The sanctifying grace of God is the permanent disposition to remain in communion with God. Because your communion and my communion with God through the Holy Spirit is what gives us the dominion over the operations and the workings and accusations of the enemy. And so the sanctifying grace of God is the permanent disposition to remain in communion with God because we have been given a dominion mandate. In the book of Genesis, it said, go, take over, dominate the whole world. Everything that flies, that, that, is, that lives in the sea, that creeps on the earth. He said, go and subdue the earth. Go and multiply. Go. I mean, God gave us dominion over everything until the enemy came. So just when the enemy thought he has gotten us, God sent his son Jesus to die for us. And through his grace, after the death and resurrection, he, gives us, he, he gave us divine reconciliation back to God. To have the communion with him so we can maintain and obtain our dominion. Hallelujah. The actual grace of God means that God's intervention in the process of our justification. The actual grace of God is God's intervention that came in a process for our justification. Number three, grace of the Holy Spirit. Is the supernatural gift to us by the Holy Spirit to show God's working power among us. Hallelujah. Number, two, number four is charism. What is charism? Talents given to us so we can build the church. Example, the charismatic church. Or a church full of gift and talent. Or which we call in America the Pentecostal church. The church was born after Pentecost. And not just only that, God gave gifts unto men and even to the church. 
So when we talk about the charismatic church or the Pentecostal church, it means a church that is full of giftings and talents and divine abilities. Hallelujah. And so number five is the grace of state. The grace of state. What is the grace of state? The responsibility given to us to build the church. The responsibility given to us to build the church. Hallelujah. And also, um, gift by the Holy Spirit. Gift by the Holy Spirit. Um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12, the gift given to the edifying of the church. These are gifts given to the edifying of the church. Hallelujah. Number two, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, talks about the diversity of gifts given to the church. The diversity of gift given to the church. And the other point is that in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, talks about gift given after his resurrection to men. Talks about the gift of God given to men by his resurrection. Or after his resurrection. And the last one is Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4, which deals or talks about gift given to men by God's grace. So you could see that there is a whole lot of blessings, giftings, and there is a whole lot of, I mean, power and grace at work through the power of God by the death and resurrection of Jesus. Grace was made available. I want to give the opportunity to somebody who is watching me right now that doesn't know Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. God is calling you to himself. He says in the last days when I'm lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. I want you to say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity in such a time like this to hear your word. I come to you just as I am and I acknowledge that I'm a sinner or I've left you and I've bastarded. I am sorry. I accept you from today as my personal Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Wash me and cleanse me with your precious blood. Write my name in the book of life and save me from going to hell. Say, devil, I denounce you. I reject you because from today I am born again and I have rededicated myself to Jesus and I belong to Jesus and I'm a property of Jesus. Congratulations if you said this, you are born again, you have been accepted. Look for a wonderful church you can attend that believe in Jesus and your life will not be the same. In case you want to reach to us, I want to give you our, our local contact number or also you can get to the Cross TV and um, you can get to us. And the local contact information is 626-375118. 626-375-5184. And if, in case you want to know more about my ministry, you can type the word Covenant Sealed Grace Chapel. And you can find out more about us on Facebook. You can be my friend. You can like us. You can follow. And your life will not be the same again. Covenant Sealed Grace Chapel. And it's on Facebook. And as you look in through it, you find out more about us. And you can get connected to us. And your life will not be the same. Hallelujah. Now I pray for any one of you that is sick. Put your hand there and on the screen. Let the grace of God come on you right now. Let the power of God touch you and heal you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. See you some other time. Amen.